I'm on the Posit blog right now, and there's this new blog post that talks about Orbital, which is a new package that they've made that allows you to take trained scikit-learn pipelines and it converts them into SQL statements that you can run on your big data warehouse or wherever your data lives. And this idea really has a lot of potential. If you think about the overhead, pulling all of your data down onto a single process and then having scikit-learn run on it, only to push it back up again, that can be a major slowdown. Being able to run all of that in SQL also means that you get the benefits of the parallelization that your big data cluster might be able to do for you. So in this video, I'm gonna give this tool a quick spin, and I'm also going to give you some pointers on what to look out for if you're interested in using this yourself. The project right now is in its early phase, so there are a few things to look out for. I am very excited about this project though, because it seems super useful, and I've been wanting to have something like this for years now. So. I'm inside of a Marimo notebook now, and I have a data set over here that can be seen as a churn use case. This is the World of Warcraft data set. You might have seen this before in some other of my videos. The thinking here is that we have a player ID, and at some point in time, this player was a uh, level 26 orc hunter, and this player was in some sort of place in World of Warcraft. And what you could use this data set for is you can track, hey, when is someone still playing this game, and when might they be churning or when are they stopping to play? And if you can have a model for that, you might be able to prevent the player from stopping the video game, let's say. But uh, in order to have the model, we have to train it. And this first column over here doesn't really do any of that. It's really just here to get the data in the right structure. In this first table over here, I have lots of rows for each player ID. And what I'm doing down below over here is I'm writing a bunch of code that lets me have a row for each player with some summary statistics. The details of this aren't that important, but it is a bunch of Polar's code. The main thing that's important is that we end up with a data set that looks a little bit more like this. So we have this one player ID. We know the class and the race of the player. We know the max level, the min level, the average level, uh, the number of active days before the strike date. Then we also know the last time there was some sort of activity. And then at the end, we know whether or not the player has churned. Did the player come back again? Yes, no. We have a label. Check out the Polar's code if you're interested in the details here. But this is the data set that I'll be working with. And this is a data set that has... Uh, 50,000 rows or so. So it's, you know, not huge, but it's not that small either. Then that was the first column. That was all about preparing the data set. This second column over here is all about preparing a database. I'm keeping it simple here. I'm just going to be using SQLite. In this cell over here, I'm turning my big churn feature table into a pandas data frame. The reason why I'm doing that is because it has this one very convenient method, this two SQL method over here. I can give it a table name as well as the engine, as well as some extra settings, like always replace it and don't pass along the index, please. But when I do that, I'm able to get all this data into the SQLite database. This is a pretty nice method from Pandas, actually. When I scroll down from here, you can see that I've also got this spot where I actually train my machine learning model. So I've got my X, I've got my Y variables for the stuff I want to use to predict, as well as the labels. And then I'm defining my scikit-learn pipeline over here, which is also something you see printed above. It's not the fanciest pipeline, but what I am saying is, hey, there's a race and class column, uh, please one hot encode those strings. Then I've also got some numeric features and I would like to have those uh, just scaled with a standard scaler. After which I apply a logistic regression. Again, it's not the fanciest machine learning model out there, uh, but it gets the job done and I'm able to just uh, fit on the data as you would normally. Notice at this point, I'm totally skipping the whole cross-validation and research step. The main thing I wanna show is how this works with Orbital. And that is happening in this third column. I'm importing the Orbital library. That's the library from Posit. And the main method is this parse pipeline method. You give it a scikit-learn pipeline as well as some features. And what you could do is you could provide your own schema. You could say, well, we've got a data frame over here. This column is this type. This column is this other type. But what you can also do is tell Orbital to just guess those data types on your behalf. This saves a lot of manual effort. And when you do that, you effectively just get this object that represents the pipeline, but in a form that can also run inside a SQL. So you can see that we've got these features over here. We can also see that uh, it made a guess on some of these columns. If you were to scroll down, you can also see some of the steps that it's going to take. One thing you can also see is there's this one hot encoder over here that is being declared. There are some categoricals that it detected. Uh, the data set is not clean to something I can also see by the way, but we can see that it's able to detect the races and the classes of World of Warcraft. You can also see that it's able to do some concatenations, but eventually when you scroll down, you see a linear classifier over here. So there's coefficients, there's intercepts, stuff that you would expect. And then we get to the fun bit, namely we can then tell Orbital to go ahead and export the SQL from that Orbital pipeline. You can give it a name of a table that it needs to apply to. You can give it the Orbital pipeline, and then you can also pass in a dialect. In this case, I'm using SQLite, but you can also expect other dialects to be supported here. I then get some SQL that goes out and I can uh, print that. I'm wrapping it in this function over here so it all fits uh, without overflowing. And if I were to export a SQL that it generated, 
oh boy, it is quite long. That's because we're doing all sorts of feature engineering, making sure that each coefficient from the logistic regression matches to some uh, variable. All of this is automated on your behalf, but you can see that we have this big SQL statement. And this is the thing that we can then choose to actually uh, go ahead and run. And that is something that I'm doing in this final column over here. I've got my SQL out string over here that contains the SQL that I need. And I'm also giving it the engine that I want it to run on. And then mo.sql uh, is the only thing you need to just run that command. And lo and behold, we have the output label. We've got the probabilities and also a check just for good measure. Uh, I can also confirm that the labels that come out here in SQL, uh, those are the same labels that come out over here if I were to just run the pipeline as normal. So that's always a good sanity check, right? But the main thing to appreciate here is that this is running all on the SQL side of things. And uh, what I can do is I can hover over here and see how long this took. This took about 381 milliseconds to run in SQL. Uh, that's a bit slower than if I were to run this in scikit-learn directly. But of course, I'm running this on a small data set. This is only 50,000 rows or so. I'm running this on SQLite, which also isn't the fastest database for this kind of a thing, right? So that's all stuff you gotta keep in the back of your mind. But depending on your data set as well as your compute cluster, this can really save you a whole bunch of time. And that is super exciting. There are, however, a few caveats to be aware of. Scikit-learn comes with lots of components and there's a huge ecosystem around it that bring even more components. And you can imagine that support for these components does vary. A few components will translate very nicely to SQL, others don't. And if you check the docs, you can also confirm that there's only a subset of the pipeline components that you can use. As time moves forward, I can imagine more and more components get added, but you can't translate every single scikit-learn pipeline using this approach. That is something to always keep in the back of your mind. Also, another thing to remember, this thing came out like yesterday. And as I was testing this, I did find a bug, which is something you can see if you switch the model. So I'm switching from a logistic regression to a gradient boosted classifier now. And if I were now to compare outputs, you are gonna see that the labels that occur in SQL actually aren't the same as you see over here out of scikit-learn. I talked to the positive people about this. They are aware of it. I imagine soon enough, there'll be a fix for it. But I do wanna point this out mainly because I do think this is the same thing to just verify if you're gonna be using this technique. There really is a lot of upside to it. I'm super excited about this project, but there are these small numeric things that deserve to be double checked here. So the main thing I wanna say is, feel free to be excited about this project. Just make sure you do some of these sanity checks yourself. In short, this is super exciting. I can definitely imagine not only a speed up, but also a boost in developer productivity, mainly because you remove a cog from a system. You don't have to pull everything down to SQL learn and then back up again. You now have a direct way of doing this via SQL and that's just great. The main thing to remember right now is that there's good reasons to be excited, but to just remember that it is an early project, which means that maybe careful exploration is the best thing to do as opposed to immediately doing everything in production right away. If you're keen to give this a spin yourself on your own backend, uh, check the link in the show notes because I am sharing this notebook. And also feel free to reach out to the people over at Posit if you have extra questions. I'm sure they're eager to get feedback on this. It is an exciting tool.